Hi, welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to take a look at the plastic flow analysis that is available as an add on module to the Top Solid 7 family of products. In the first sample, we're just going to look at running a quick analysis on a basic part. We're not going to worry about runner or gate or anything like that. We just want to run the analysis on the part directly. My goal of this video would be to show you two different ways to work with plastic flow analysis inside the top solid product line. Let's get started. The very first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your material type is set correctly so that when we run the analysis, the software knows what type of material you want to run the test on. To begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my entities manager here. I'm going to come up to parameters and I'm going to look at the material. And you can see here that right now it's set to some form of aluminum. Now, if this was die cast, maybe that's what you want to run the analysis on. But this is a plastic flow analysis. So I want to change the material type to some type of material with plastic. I'm also going to show you how to define your own material quickly, because I think it's, a, it's important that you know how to do this. So I'm going to right click on sample one folder, and I'm going to go to document. Here, I'm going to go and choose material from the list. I'm in the advanced tab, by the way, and I'm a green check mark. Next, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it ABS. Um, if you want to know the weight of your part, you can put in the density of ABS. I'm purely making up a number here for density because I'm not too concerned about that right now. For classification, this is going to be an elastomer. Perfect. If you want to play with the rendering characteristics of this, knock yourself out. All I care about here is going to my Tools tab and describing a CAD mold material. It is critical if you're using the CAD mold plastic flow analysis tool that you apply a CAD mold material. To do that, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to look for a grade of ABS. I'm going to use this one here. Perfect. Green check mark. I'm also going to verify that the CAD mold identifier was added. Again, without this, it's not going to work. I'm going to come over here to my project tree here, and I'm going to call this ABS as well, just so that I'm consistent across everything. And I'm going to go ahead and close that tab. Next, I want to apply my material type here to be ABS. And there's two ways to do that, three ways, really. Um, I can come back again to my parameters tab to material. I can right click and go to material encoding. But since I have my material floating right here, I can just grab it and drag and drop it. If I drag and drop it into the design space, boom. It's set to ABS. You can do this while in assembly as well, but if you're in an assembly document, drag and drop it directly onto the part to assign the material that way. Great, now that we've got that done, it's time to do the analysis. So I'm gonna right click on cover one, and now I'm gonna come down to plastic flow analysis preparation. Choose blank template, green check mark. I'm gonna accept the defaults here. I'm gonna accept the default surface tolerance and facet length here as well. Next, the software wants to know where the injection points are. Well, for this test, I'm going to come over here to select injection points, double left click, and I'm going to come over here to this face because I know that I'm going to inject onto that face, and I'm just going to do a point on surface. And I'll go right here roughly. Perfect. Green check mark. That's my point. And done. Green flag. Material is defined. Green flag. Process parameters. Go here, double click. If you're a molder and you know the rough filling time you want, the pressure controlled filling, the melt temperature, the wall temperature, and so on, you can totally fill this out yourself. If you need a little help, hit recommended values and CAD mold will fill in good values for you. I'm going to hit the green check mark. Everything here is green. That means the analysis is now set up. Last thing I need to do is hit run the analysis. But before I do, because I'm a good user, I'm going to save so my preparation document is done, and now I'm going to hit solve. Now, because I'm using CAD mold in the U.S., CAD mold in the U.S. is run over the Internet. It's a cloud-based solution, so this is going to solve on the cloud. We'll click OK, and now in real time, it's going to start running our analysis. And in a few short seconds here, you're going to see the first level of the analysis kicking through. Kind of cool. Once it's done with the analysis, then we can play with the results a bunch of different ways. And I'll show you that here in 
probably about five seconds or so. Analysis looks like it's finishing up. Perfect. And we're done. So this dialog box that pops up, this is giving you some basic information about it. Okay. It's telling you how much time it's requiring for cooling right here. It's telling you the max temperature during filling, the shear rate, if there's sink marks where they are. So I'm going to click OK. Now, what can we do with this document? Here, I'm going to come up to the results tab. I'm going to click this button here called results display. Like that, I can go and check the thickness, for example. Here, I'm looking for any sink marks. Here you can see clearly there'd be some sink marks. If I flip this over, you can see why. Whoever designed this put a really thick boss type of rib in here. And of course, that's going to cause a sink mark. Here you see a slight sink mark from the ribs. Not too bad. But the software is doing a good job of showing you that. Next, we can go to time when filled. And this is the animation for filling. You can, of course, play that. And you can rotate. I'm using my space mouse to do that right now. You can rotate, pan, and zoom while that's happening. Of course, you can grab the slider and set it anywhere just to see what's happening at that exact moment in time. And you can see the dialog is updating dynamically during that simulation as well. We can go down to temperature when filled also. So you can see what kind of temperatures the part will be at, where any potential hot spots are. Interesting. And then you have a snapshot of pressure. Again, here's your pressure gauge here. This is showing you any pressure areas and so on. So we have a filling problem section. This one is telling me that based on where I'm getting that, we're going to get 100% filled on this. But if any air pockets were created or whatnot, the software is going to tell you that too, which is kind of cool. So this is your simple analysis. Now what I want to do is I want to show you something a bit more realistic to what you're going to be working on. Because typically, when you want to run an analysis, you want to do it based on having your runners and gates in there as well. So here you can see my runners, and you can see I'm stepping down in size, just like you would in your real mold. Okay. We have where the plastic's coming in, and we have all the way down to the gate, and it's a simple two-cavity mold. Again, I'm going to start by describing this as ABS. Same material. That's it. I'm going to save, and I'm going to run the analysis. Again, I'm going to accept all the defaults here. I'm going to set my injection points. In this case, it's just up there, so the plastic's going to flow down this way. From here, I'm going to fill my process parameter in. Cool. And go. And like that, I'm going to hit save once, and we're going to let the solver kick in. Now here, I'm going to let it uh, calculate for you and show you a little bit of the, the calculation in real time. It doesn't take long, but this is a video, and I don't want you guys to have to sit here forever watching calculation. So I'm going to pause the video for a minute while it's calculating. Okay, we're back. So again, you have your basic information. We can come back to here. We can watch that animation again. We can look for the same thickness issues when filling, even on the two cavity. We can go back to here. We can watch that animation happen. Move it back and forth. You can, of course, hit play. Let it go as fast or slow as you want during the animation so you can see things. And again, at the end of the day, you get the idea. You are able to run a very simple analysis on your part without having to work that hard to get to that final result. Hope you enjoyed the video. Check back to blog.topsolid.com for more videos soon.